Hey everyone, welcome to our Spiritual Disciplines podcast here at Worship Center. Um, it's our hope that we can give you some insight into how to implement spiritual disciplines into your everyday lives so that you can become a growing follower of Jesus. Um, I'm here with Matt and Kelly Mylan. Hey Chelsea. Hey. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, I want to know, if you could start a podcast, any podcast, what would the topic be? What would you start a podcast about? True crime. <laughs> I actually do like to listen to true crime. I can't watch it, but I can listen to it. Okay. Ooh, any podcast. Um, I would probably do something with moms. I'm not exactly sure what, but probably something for to encourage and support moms. Okay, I would listen to that. Yes, my first you subscriber. <laughs> wow, I bet that one too. I would too. Yeah, yeah. that's uh-huh. cool. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds interesting. <laughs> Matt, it's like, tell me more, please. How How can I be a better mom? What about you, Matt? Yeah. um, Well, if it was a serious podcast, I would love to interview um, pastors of all church sizes and get a sense, like, just hear what is their day to day, what's their week to week, what's their Mm -hmm. message prep uh, experience, and learn, like, just just to get more, uh, I think, to hear pastor's stories would be really interesting. If it was a non-serious one, I would love to do a podcast on uh, pickleball. I almost just finished your sentence for you, yeah. all, but I thought that'd be rude. What kind of surfaces <laughs> you should play I was on, gonna say. What, what some tips and tricks for it, and uh, interview some of the good players that are out there. A pickleball podcast. I mean, who would not want to listen to that? <laughs> the you two have, of you. you have negative like, two listeners. <laughs> So I would listen to your mom's podcast. Just so uh-huh. you know. Wait, I didn't know that we get to have a non-serious one. Oh, if we have a non-serious it. one, yeah, you could be as goofy as possible. Well, not as goofy as possible. <laughs> I think it'd be so fun to like interview people, like ask anyone, like, what is your most embarrassing moment? I think that would be very fun. Oh. That would be because I feel like that question always stumps people. But then when they tell their story, I think it's really funny. But I don't. <laughs> No one would listen to that. So maybe not. I would on. listen to that for Thanks. sure. Oh, more than the mom podcast. <laughs> well, I didn't say that, but <laughs> I was thinking it. Um, I think if I were to choose something, I think I'd be doing exactly what I'm doing right now. So. Wow. Bucket list right wow. here. Wow. Yeah, I, yeah. That's awesome. I've peaked and it's all downhill from here. <laughs> as long as you don't peak in high school, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. Some mountain peaks are very long. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> this is the mountain range. Yeah. I'm on. Yep. <laughs> that's funny. I love that. Um, Well, we have a really cool topic today to talk about. We were talking about the spiritual discipline of celebration. Uh, I want to know, why is celebration even a spiritual discipline? Shouldn't we just do it? Or like, it doesn't seem serious enough. I don't know. A couple different questions go through my head. Mm. Why is celebration a spiritual discipline? Well, Kelly Mylan is the perfect one to answer that. I I figured. You are a celebrator. (laughs) Thanks. I am a celebrator. Um, I do think it's funny to use the word discipline and celebrate in the same. Ooh. Do you know what I I understand why that sounds really funny, but Uh I always think celebration is tied to gratitude. I feel like when we celebrate, we're usually remembering, um, either remembering something, like marking something that's happening in the present or remembering something that happened in the past. So I I actually feel like like we should correct it and update it to not the discipline of celebration, but gratitude. If, If, you know... If I'm doing my third (laughs) podcast on what should we call the spiritual disciplines. Um, But I think it's really tied to to gratitude. I think when in the Bible, when we look at times when people celebrated, they were often remembering what God did, Mm -hmm. um, basically having a big party over something that they were thankful for. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why it's important. Personally, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, that's good. Well, you have helped me a lot with this area because Kelly's very good at celebrating birthdays, for example. And it's not just about... (laughs) <laughs> Let's do a big party for a person. It's being very intentional about how to celebrate each of our kids' birthdays individually and marking the day that they entered into our family. Mm-hmm. And um, We're doing one tonight. That's a, Yeah. <laughs> that is a principle that I think should be applied to what God has, has done in your life. So mm-hmm. I wish I could remember the day that I that I committed my life to Jesus. I don't remember either. I don't have the date on that, but I think that would be a very significant day each year to mark. Mm -hmm. And I wish I would have that, but Mm -hmm. there are things like that, that I think celebrating, even for me, I'm not a natural celebrator. That for me, it would be a discipline because it's a decision Mm -hmm. to intentionally remember a specific moment or something that was a defining 
point in my life Mm -hmm. to thank God and just be grateful for him. But what would you say? Um, yeah. Why it's a spiritual discipline. And you're right. I think it's a funny word, um, Mm -hmm. to use discipline and (laughs) celebration together. Um, but I, we just see it so often in the Bible. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think kind of like the other topics that we've talked about, it's easy to forget to celebrate or take things for granted. And that attitude of gratitude, um, (laughs) just comes in with that. When you have a grateful heart for what God's done in your life, then you are more apt to celebrate it. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, just seeing celebration throughout scripture, even in the Old Testament, um, just the Israelites had so many different festivals. And I think when you look through the like the law and the talks about this is how you should celebrate this and this and this, you can kind of look through it through the lens of this is a very dry reading of scripture. And like, yeah, they set up tents and they live in tents for a week or something. Um, but it's actually like God setting aside a time for them to celebrate what he's done. Like mm-hmm. he actually like gives them a vacation from work, <laughs> which is kind of cool to think about. Like God is like all about celebration. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's probably what I would say, why it's a spiritual discipline. It's easy to forget Mm -hmm. about, and God wants us to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but I want to know, because I think you guys are so good at this, how does your family celebrate? What do you guys do to implement that spiritual discipline? Um, I just thought it when you said you wish you remembered or knew the date that you were that you accepted Jesus, um, that's a big day. I always, our kids always get a written note from us or a card or something on their, we call it their Jesus birthday. Um, so every year I send a card or give them a card like I would if it was their their physical birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, same on their baptism anniversary. Um, I just think those are really special days that I would hope that they always remember. And as they're getting older, it's interesting. Um, they're, they're, I've noticed like Hallie someday, she's like, hey mom, like it's my Jesus birthday. And she knows now, which I think is really yeah. cool because I think I wish I would have, I wish I, I don't know the date. Um, maybe somebody somewhere wrote it down, but I don't know <laughs> mine. Um, those are some things that we do. We do, um, I mean, per, me personally, I keep a gratitude journal and I think of that as celebration. I don't, I've not thought of it consciously that way, but when I think about ways that I, I celebrate, um, I usually try every night before bed, if not first thing in the morning. Um, Three things I was thankful for that day or the day before. It helps me just to not let things get past me without like remembering and being like, hey, that's that's a big deal. Thank Mm -hmm. you, God, for what you did there. Mm -hmm. Um, Trying to think of other ways. I mean, we talk about our highs and lows. I mean, I don't think, I think we've talked about that a lot at Worship Center. (laughs) We talk about our highs and lows a lot. So I think that's our small way of, you know, celebrating a win in the day. and something God has done. I'm trying to think of other ways that we do that. I mean, we do like to celebrate people. So if it's their birthday or anniversary or a day of significance, um, those are really important things for us to mark. I think also along with that, even days that were sad, um, like days that, like an anniversary of a loss, Mm -hmm. um, celebrate feels like a strange word, um, but I always feel like that's really important to remember. Again, Mm -hmm. I think it's tied to like remembrance and gratitude. Mm -hmm. So even, the anniversary of a loss is often the celebration of God's faithfulness in getting us through another year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. Can you think of other ways that we do that? Yeah. I mean, you captured a lot of those. I, I think the practice of even gathering on a Sunday morning with a community of faith, like we do here at worship center, that's a discipline to celebrate what God has done. And I hope that our, services create that environment for for people but to do that week after week it's setting a time aside to just thank god for what he's done and and celebrate encourage one another i think that's Mm -hmm. the way scripture guides us don't neglect the meeting of yourselves or get a gathering together like some people do but do it more as the day of uh, christ's return gets closer Mm -hmm. so i think that is one and then scripture gives us practices like communion Mm -hmm. um even water, like communion, Jesus said, do this to remember me. Mm -hmm. And we've grown up in church our our whole lives. So they've, in some ways, they're not new to us. Flip side can be, it can become just kind of tradition and, and maybe not as meaningful, but I, I, as I'm getting older, I just want to be more intentional when, especially when it comes to communion, to really consider what does it mean to remember what Jesus did? Mm -hmm. And let that be a time of both celebrating and just this heart of gratitude of what he's done. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think there are other things I think of like that people of Israel, they always built altars after something that God did. Mm -hmm. And when I look back over my own life, there are times where God did big things and I wasn't, I didn't build an altar and, um, I wish that I would have in those. So it's a discipline yeah. that I'd actually love to put into practice more for those things. Mm-hmm. But yeah. what do you, what do you do? Um, all right. I'm, I would probably not be naturally inclined to celebrate things. I don't think I like have been in my life of like important dates, but like my husband Dustin really is. Hmm. So, um, and as I'm like growing as a parent and talking to other parents who have gone before me and what they've done, it's been so helpful for me to implement different celebrations in our lives. Um, so for example, we, um, Dustin took all of us to like our whole family to um the place where he proposed back in april like on the anniversary of our his proposal date he took all of us there it was like it was so funny we had all three kids with us we like hiked up a mountain and everyone was like uh like complaining and (laughs) wait and say how old your kids are this is significant yeah uh well at the time there were seven four and one yeah (laughs) so it was just uh it was a lot (laughs) and we got there and i knew like he actually was surprising me, but I knew what he was doing when, once we got there. I was like, oh, this is what we're doing. Because he like, does things like that. He remembers things. He goes back to the place and he's like, this is what happened. This is the history of our family. This is why you guys are here. Like, Aren't you so thankful that mommy and daddy are married and love each other and all these different things? So he's really good at things like that. Yeah. Um, and then I think for celebrating in our family, one thing that I love that we do for birthdays is I like prep the again they're pretty young but I prep the kids in advance whoever's birthday it is and say I want you to be thinking today about what is something that you've seen this person grow in or what is something you appreciate about them that um or how like God has made them and I want you to be ready to talk about it at dinner tonight or Mm -hmm. wherever whatever meal we're having as a family and so we go around and list like two or three things that we've seen that person grow in or that um, we see God's doing in their lives or something that we really love about the person, depending on the age of the child speaking. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And it's just been a really fun tradition that we've done for several years now. And I think just celebrating a person and Mm -hmm. how they've grown. Mm -hmm. Like for Titus this year, it's been a year of him accepting Christ since his birthday and um, being baptized and just how we've seen him grown spiritually. So it was just a really special moment this year mm-hmm. of like how we've really seen you grown, grow. Because I think as a kid, maybe it's not that easy to, I mean, definitely mm-hmm. not that easy to think about that. But as a yeah. parent looking at him, like, oh my goodness, like Jesus is working in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, so like those kind of celebrations are really meaningful to me. And it's been fun as a parent to do that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, That's I'm one of my not, favorite things about, we do that on birthdays. Sometimes on Mother's Day and Father's Day, if we don't, we don't initiate that. Like, what do you love about us, guys? <laughs> I probably um, have initiated that at least once. <laughs> so it's Father's Day. But we like to go around the table and just share, like, what do we love or what do we appreciate about that person? And I think, um, I think in family life, like, I mean, some people are more wired this way and some people are not. But I don't think in family life, life in the everyday, we're ever, we're often very conscious of, like, speaking words of affirmation. Mm-hmm. We will at, at special moments. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think sometimes when we do it at special moments, they stick more. Um, and so I think it's a really special thing to actually verbalize it. We can write it in a card and that's great too, but to actually look eye to eye with a person and say, this is what I really value about you, or this is why you're so great. I think Mm -hmm. that's really powerful. Those are Mm -hmm. life giving words. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking too, um, when we talked earlier about how we celebrate another thing, I started doing this two years ago. I have a, it's a, it's a five year journal. And so every page is like a day of the year. It'd be like, today is, what is today? July 27th. And it said, it has five different years. So it would be like, you start it whenever. Yeah. So like for the last two, every, it would have five lines in July 27th. So like I wrote down last year on July 27th, what happened that day? And then I did this year and then I will next year. And what I love about it is so once you do this up for a year, (laughs) what I love about it, like what I wrote today, I looked back and saw, oh my goodness, last year, what we did. And I feel like it's a way, it like triggers celebration. Like actually recording it doesn't necessarily do that. But when I look back and I'm like, wow, that seemed like so long ago. Or do you remember what life felt like then? And look where God's brought us. So I think sometimes, um, I like record keeping, but I think sometimes actually writing things down is what triggers our memory because just the older we get, the more that's up there. It's hard to remember. So I think being intentional just to yeah. record things is really helpful. At least for at least for me, it's very helpful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't keep it all up here. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, what can you think of a time in your life that was a really big celebration for you that you felt really celebrated? 
like I'm just I know this is a little off script actually I didn't send you this question in advance but I'm curious <laughs> is there a time in your life that you felt like wow this feels really good people have celebrated me and like God is doing something in my life I can go first if you want time to think. Yeah, yeah go, go, you I was go, just girl. thinking about my high school graduation. <laughs> um, it's just like, I don't know. Maybe it's kind of silly to think that far back. Because, I mean, I have had weddings. I had babies and all these different things. Weddings, sorry. I have not had weddings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you clarified. <laughs> um, but my high school graduation was like, I felt really celebrated because of like what my parents did. for me. Not just like, you know, the typical party and stuff, but... They um, got me this really nice Bible that I still have today that I use Aww. all the time. They wrote like just words of affirmation in it and a prayer for me. And it's just something that I treasure. And I just like remember ending that day thinking, wow, like my family really loves me. And mm. that's like, a, that has been a marker in my life. That's beautiful. That is. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> not your second wedding? It wasn't no, your second or second third wedding? wedding. Okay, good. <laughs> my good non-existent one <laughs> to clarify. <laughs> I'm try- that's a hard question to answer. I'm trying to think. I I think for me, I feel um, I really appreciate written word. So um, for me, I feel celebrated when someone takes the time to write down a word of encouragement to me. Um, so I I think those are times in my life when I feel like last year on my birthday, um, a handful of people, you were among them, Chelsea, <laughs> wrote me really sweet notes, and it, um, they are still they're on my dresser, and I. Um, I think those are times that I feel like celebrated or just, I guess, seen and valued. That's mm-hmm. that ma- that matters a lot to me. Mm-hmm. How about you? Yeah, I think I would Father's say something Day. similar. Yeah. <laughs> Father's Day when you initiate when you're that like, conversation. Tell me right. why you love when me. I ask everyone <laughs> hey, to say, it's time. What they appreciate. <laughs> uh, but one of the traditions we we have had at Christmas is when we ex- the five of us we exchange names, mm. um, and then that person. Like we do a gift exchange that way. But with that gift exchange, usually there's a handwritten note with it. And it maybe that our kids feel it's obligatory. I don't know. But <laughs> um, I'm kind of agree with you. Like handwritten notes are a way. To, I don't know. This is the only way. It gives a window into what somebody appreciates about. And it's something that lasts too. And I, I guess it goes mm-hmm. to that's why the written word is so mm-hmm. uh, powerful because yeah. it, it keeps a record of what somebody appreciates. And a lot of times I don't realize that, that, um, I'm appreciated that way mm-hmm. in our home, especially. And so it's mm-hmm. really, yeah, I feel grateful. So it's not like a huge thing, but yeah. it, it is a step that mm-hmm. an amount of time invested into it. It means mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, we talked a little bit about how the church exercises this discipline of celebration with communion and water baptism. Could you, Talk about some other ways the church celebrates, like uses that spiritual discipline, um, whether that's worship center or the church globally. Uh Um, And then also maybe just touch a little bit more on the details of why do we, why is communion a celebration? Why is baptism a celebration? Yeah. What do you think? Oh, me? Sure. (laughs) I'm like, oh, me? (laughs) What? (laughs) Um, when, When you mentioned this earlier, I was thinking of communion as being probably it, um, one of the most valuable celebrations I think that we do as a church together corporately. Um, I know we've done that. We do it more frequently now at Worship Center than we used to, and I love that because the whole idea behind communion is remembering and cel- remembering the Lord's death until he until he returns, and I think there's something. It's it's so odd to attach the word celebration to that practice mm-hmm. because it is very sobering, um, remembering the body and blood of Christ. Mm-hmm. But I think the fact that we do that together, there's a corporate moment. Our world is so fast, and our lives are so moving, moving, moving. And when you have a moment, especially corporately together, to stop and remember, I feel like it it does like it jars our brains into like. This is this is what it's all about. This is mm-hmm. why we're here. This is what we're doing mm-hmm. as a church family together. I think that's such a valuable practice. Um, I think communion is one of those special moments that kind of stops us in our tracks. And I think water baptism actually here, even just the way that we do it, I feel like it's just a it's a pause and like the, this is what people this is what God is doing in people's lives. Like we can have conversations, we can be in small group and all of those things and know talk about what God's doing in people's lives. But when we get to have a moment to hear what God has done in someone's life and get to witness that special moment of them going under the water and coming up a new creation, there's something powerful in that together that I think that is 
as a church, we're building a monument, a memorial, recognizing this person's crossing from death to life. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's something really powerful about doing that corporately because mm -hmm. I've heard it said gratitude is not silent. So we can like think it in our head, mm -hmm. like, wow, that's really cool. Or, you know, remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. But when we actually celebrate it together, there's something really powerful mm -hmm. um, about that. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I would add the way that we like Christmas and Easter are big holidays, mm -hmm. obviously for church and for just followers of Jesus. But remembering why Christmas is a big deal. It, it's not just because of all of celebrations around the activities of Christmas, but it comes down to Jesus or, or God actually uh, came to this earth in the form of a baby. He could have come as a superhero. He could have come as a <laughs> king, you know, a powerful king with lots of influence, but he came as a little human baby, letting us know that he comes just like us. He's human, just like us, yet he's still God. So to, Remember that year after year after year after year is a way to commemorate, celebrate, recognize that Jesus laid down his divine privileges and came as a human. Easter is the same thing. We have a, you know, Good Friday is a way to uh, remember what Jesus did, what he went through. Uh, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday is the day to remember he rose from the dead. And because he lives, we can have you know, resurrection life and live with within that. So those are all ways that they can get lost, but I think it is a practice that is important to not diminish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you, as you were talking about water baptism, you know, even that water baptism, the, the act for that person, as well as the testimony is mm -hmm. so powerful to hear how God has transformed someone's life. And I read this recently. I don't know if it's, I have to fact check it, but that scientists have done research that the same part of your brain that, uh, that is used to, to be grateful or to be thankful is the same part where you also worry. Mm -hmm. So if you are being thankful, you cannot worry at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's, that's a, another, whether that's exactly true or not, but there's a principle behind that, that when you're saying thank you, you can't worry about something. And so I think that's a, an aspect of why mm -hmm. celebration is a discipline because it keeps our attention and our focus on what God has done. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. if we are in a situation where we're tempted to worry or mm -hmm. be in fear, we go back to that. I know God was faithful in the past and he will be faithful again. Mm -hmm. now. I see it. We, um, I think that comes into play too when we give. Um, that's something that yeah. we've put into practice and how we celebrate. Um, I don't know that we've ever done this together, but separately, um, our paychecks come direct deposit. So we get an email. <laughs> um, and so on those days, are the, that's the same day that we tie that's automatic. So that can all just be very automated and we like never even see it. Mm -hmm. um, but we always, each separately, we take a moment those that day and just thank God and like, God, thank you for this paycheck and to acknowledge that our giving just in our own quiet, quiet moment. And I think it's a way for us to like acknowledge God's generosity toward us and also be intentional in our giving rather than just being like a automatic withdrawal from our account. And we just yeah. like, like it's a bill that we're paying. Yeah. And so even in our services, when we take a moment and just recognize why we give, um, it, again, it kind of jars our brain into remembering like, why, why is this, why is this important? And that we don't get an automatic. Mm -hmm. Um, I think for us, it would be just easy to take for granted that God provides and you get a paycheck. And, but when we take time to like respect it, honor it, celebrate and thank God for it, I think it just makes it such a, I think we can make something very mundane, a very spiritual practice by choosing yeah. to be thankful for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I think all those all those things with that we do like I guess corporately as like the big C church, like thinking how like on a, any given Sunday we might be participating in the spiritual discipline of celebration through communion or baptism or whatever, like all over the world people are doing that together. But then I was also thinking as you guys were talking about the different ways we celebrate as a local body of mm -hmm. believers, like mm -hmm. I'm thinking about um 
like uh, the 40 years of faithfulness that we did a few years ago, mm-hmm. or even just bringing our global partners home and celebrating what God has done through them throughout the world, or when we paid off the building, it's not the, it's mm-hmm. not the celebration of us mm-hmm. and what we can we can accomplish on our own human efforts, but really it's like, look what God has done mm-hmm. um, right. through our local body. Like that's, mm-hmm. I think that's important to celebrate. The Bible doesn't mm-hmm. say celebrate when you pay off your building, but like, <laughs> but we should as a body of believers. That's like that's part of our. Um, it's part of being a church is to participate in that, like a local body of believers coming together to Mm -hmm. worship, um, to like listen to teaching, to um, be in community. And part of that is celebrating. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's a really cool thing that worship center does a great job at celebrating things that are happening and the way that God's moving through um, this body of believers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a question that, uh, I don't know. I'm curious to hear your answer. I think you touched on it a little bit, but what does it look like to practice celebration even in the middle of hard things or difficult circumstance? Oh man. Celebration and hard times. Again, it sounds yeah. counterintuitive. <laughs> um, when you were talking, I was just thinking about the um, illustration in the Bible when Jesus healed the 10 lepers and one came back and said, mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. And Jesus' response was, where are the other nine? Mm-hmm. So there's something valuable about verbalizing our gratitude and making that a moment, just like you were saying, like when we do things to make it a moment here, yeah. it's our way of saying like, God, we've like, I'm imagining that that individual, all those individuals that were healed were hopeful and prayerful for healing. Mm-hmm. But then when Jesus answered it, just moved on with their lives and forgot the value of what just happened to them. And so especially in hard times, I think in hard times, it's so easy for us to focus on asking God for what we need. God, heal this person, meet this need, provide for me, help my children, whatever it is. It's so easy to focus on that. We get focused on it for a period of time. And then when God comes through, we have this moment of like, that's great. Okay, next thing. I think our human nature is always on to the next thing. So I think in hard times, it's so important to make sure that we write it down, tell somebody else, verbally thank God for what he's doing because it keeps our eyes focused on what he can do and not just what's not happening or what we think that he's not doing. Um, I think in hard times, it's so funny, just a couple nights ago around our dinner table, we were having a conversation with our daughter, Alyssa. She's a Starbucks barista. And she was saying, um, it was like discount Wednesday afternoon. They're having go to Starbucks on Wednesday afternoons <laughs> uh, till the end of the summer. But it anyway, it's crazy town because there's this big discount. And she's like, we ran out of this, we ran out of this. And she said everyone was kind of stressed, like, oh my word, we ran out of ran out of like lemonade concentrate. And she said it was like the end of the world. Like it was like, oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? And she was talking to her cousin about this story. And her cousin was saying in her work, she runs into that sometimes, like oh man, there's a situation like, how am I going to handle this? And she said, then I always stop and I'm think, I stop and I think, no one's dying. It's all going to be okay. <laughs> and I thought, what an interesting perspective to have. Like so often the things that we think are this place in life mm-hmm. in God's hands, they're, they're not, it's all solvable. Mm-hmm. It's all, mm-hmm. he has, he's sovereign over all of it. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes just perspective in hard times really helps us to be like, okay, how bad is this really? I don't want to minimize it. There are times when truly somebody is dying. Someone yeah. is sick. There yeah. is intensity. But I think when our focus in times that can just feel like they pinch us, when our mm-hmm. focus is on Jesus, it mm-hmm. makes it so much easier in times that are tough to realize every single thing he does because our senses are awake, are heightened. Mm-hmm. Our awareness of God is heightened because we're seeking him for something big. Mm-hmm. So I think sometimes then we recognize more quickly what he is doing. Mm-hmm. But to stop and say thank you, I think, is so critical mm-hmm. to how we'll look back on that one, two, three, ten years down the road. I think it's also a part of legacy, too. There are things that we didn't, like, we didn't experience certain things here at Worship Center 40 years ago. But I don't, we don't want people to forget what God has mm-hmm. done over the years of time. So it's our yeah. job to remember yeah. and to celebrate. Same with our families. Yeah. yeah. That was a great answer. I, <laughs> I would you. only add one small thing. <laughs> I, to celebrate, for that discipline to to be in practice in hard times, I think you just have to be in community with people. Mm-hmm. Because if you're mm-hmm. isolated, uh, for me, it's very hard to just 
try to celebrate something in isolation when I'm in a discouraging time. Mm-hmm. But getting around other people who aren't in a hard time, um, it will just pull you up. And I think there's value of in that community connection, being in relationship with people. Uh, it's one of the highest values, I think, in in our, you know, being followers of Jesus to grow in community, grow together. That's why, because mm-hmm. when I'm going through something hard, you may be going through something great and you have the spiritual, mental energy to encourage. Mm-hmm. And when you're going through something difficult and I'm going, I'm going through a great season, I have the mental and spiritual energy to encourage and, yeah. and we help each other out. Mm-hmm. So much of the New Testament teaches us how to do that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think that's why remembrance and gratefulness are so connected to celebration Mm -hmm. um because i don't think maybe in the midst of remembering god's faithfulness in the middle of something hard kind of what you said you've been faithful before you'll be faithful again um that might not come across as like oh i'm celebrating but in reality like Declaring who God is and the truth that we have available in his word is a celebration. Um, it's like repeating the things that we know to be true. What a gift that we have truth. Because I think I think about maybe people who, um, who don't have faith and don't have truth to turn to. Um, but to know that what we've been given is true um, and repeat those true things to ourselves, even in the midst of trouble or um, difficult circumstances, I think... Again, I don't think it's the word celebration that comes to mind, but I think that actually mm-hmm. is it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're celebrating God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah, I think I think that's probably what I go to the most in a difficult circumstance. I actually like kind of like you, okay, like I gotta take a step back. What's what's true? Yeah. And I like repeat in my mind the things that I know to be true, whether that's about my circumstance or whether that's about God. If nothing I can think of is like bringing me any peace in my circumstance, then I just go to, well, I know God's faithful. And mm-hmm. I know that he takes care of me. I know that he loves me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that he loves this person that I maybe I'm praying for or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that that remembrance of truth, I think, is really vital to this discipline. That's an excellent point because I think it's easy to think celebration can be um, personality driven. Yeah. Like or if a, you're, one big party all the time. Exactly. <laughs> like it's the fun loving people that celebrate or you have to be an Enneagram 7 to celebrate. <laughs> um, I don't think that that's true at all. I think... Celebration is, again, so much more tied to gratitude, mm-hmm. which is a very private practice. Mm-hmm. Um, so celebration doesn't even have to be loud and, you know, everything to the nines. Right. It is about honoring God with our thoughts and our words, really. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you can be an Enneagram <laughs> one through nine and still be a celebrator. I was going to pick out numbers, but I'm like not going to mess with that. Can you be an introvert and be a celebrator? One hundred percent you can be an introvert <laughs> and a know. celebrator. You might be more of like a happy birthday instead of happy birthday. (laughs) Not saying which of us would be which, but you know, we might have that. Um, But absolutely, you can be a celebrator and an introvert. Yeah. Um, I'm going to finish up by reading a verse or a passage of scripture that I think goes really well with this discipline. Um, It's Psalms 105, uh, starting in verse two. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell about all his wondrous works, honor his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wondrous works he has done, his wonders, and the judgments he has pronounced. So I just want to thank you guys for talking about celebration. I think it's um, a really important thing to talk about. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. We hope that it was helpful for you. And if it was, we hope you join us again next week. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. If you haven't already, follow along on our series at worshipcenter.org slash watch. And don't forget to join our online community, Worship Center 167, to continue the conversation.